In today's lecture, I'm going to talk about Fanchel duality. This is a very important topic in optimization. We consider the following optimization problem. Minimize 5 of x, which is f of x plus 3 of ax, where x runs in rn. Here, f is a function from rn to the extended real line. A is an M by N matrix and G is a function from RM to the extended real line. We are going to use the tools of Fentel conjugates to study this problem. Specifically, um, we are going to define a new problem called a dual problem with the hope that the dual problem is easier to solve and has close relationship with the original problem called the primal problem, um, we can uh, provide a way to solve the primal problem based on the dual problem. Now, I'm going to get into the details of Fentel duality. The first proposition um, gives a very important connection between the optimal value of this optimization problem and the Fentel conjugate of the function 5. So let me go ahead and uh, give the detailed proof of this proposition. The proof of this proposition is very simple. It is based on the definition of the Fentel conjugate. So let me start by um, recalling the definition of the Fentel conjugate of the function 5. So we have the following. The Fentel conjugate of 5 at v is the supremum of the inner product of v and x minus 5 of x where x runs in rn so the Fentel conjugate of 5 at 0 is given by uh, the following formula um, 5 star of 0 is just the supremum of the inner product of 0 and x minus 5 of x where x runs in rn so it is the supremum of minus 5 of x where x runs in rn and this, my, this supremum is minus infimum of 5 of x where x runs in rn Okay. It follows that the infimum of 5 of x where x runs in i is exactly minus 5 star of 0. And this is what we want to prove. Um, note that this is actually the optimal value of the um, optimization problem that we would like to solve. Let me continue by explaining some ideas behind the Fentel duality. Before that, I'm gonna recall two important results. Here, f and h are two extended real value functions defined on Rn. As you can see from the previous lecture, the Fentel conjugate of the sum of f and h is always less than or equal to the infimal convolution of the Fentel conjugate of f and the Fentel conjugate of h. And uh, by the definition, this infimal convolution is the inf of the sum of the Fentel conjugate of f at v1 and the Fentel conjugate of h at v2. And over here, v1 plus v2 is equal to v. And here is an upper estimate for the Fentel conjugate of the composition of G and A. And A here is an um, M by N matrix, and G is a function defined on Rm. And um, from the previous lecture, we know that this Fentel conjugate is always less than or equal to the inf of um, the Fentel conjugate of G at U and the infimum is taken on all u in Rm so that a transpose times u is v. And note that sometimes 
um, this set, the set of all u such that uh, this is true is empty. In that case, by um, convention, the in, we, we get the in, infimum of the empty set and uh, it is infinity. Um, recall that our goal is to solve um, the optimization problem in which we would like to minimize the function 5. And um, from the proposition presented at the beginning, we have a very nice relationship between uh, the optimal value of that optimization problem and the Fentel conjugate of the objective function 5. So um, we, we have the following. The infimum of 5 of x as x runs in n is equal to minus the Fentel conjugate of 5 at 0. Okay? And um, as we know, the Fentel conjugate of 5 at 0 is um, the sum of the Fentel conjugate of the sum of f and the composition of g and a at 0. Uh, this is true because 5 is just the, this sum, okay? And uh, by the first estimate we um, presented, this is less than or equal to the um, infimal convolution of the Fentel conjugate of f and um, the Fentel conjugate of this composition at 0. Okay. And if we look at um, if we look at the definition of the infimal convolution, we will see that whenever the sum of u and v is zero, um, this is always less than or equal to um, f star of u plus this composition star um, of v. So in particular, this is always less than or equal to f star of uh, minus v plus um, the composition of g and a star at v and this is true for all v in rn why because the sum of minus v and v is just zero okay so this is always uh, less than or equal to f star of v minus v and now we are going to apply uh, the, the upper estimated uh, the upper estimate presented earlier for this composition so it's less than or equal to um, g star of, um, of v actually of u and this is true um, whenever a transpose times u is equal to v okay so now um, we can replace v by a transpose times u and get this. This is actually f star of minus um, a transpose times u plus g star of u. Okay. So now um, with this, we are able to uh, prove the following um, phi star of zero is always less than or equal to f star of a transpose times u plus g star of minus u and this is true for all u in rn okay so uh, we just simply replace uh, u here by minus u okay and then we get this now um, from here we will see that minus f star of a transpose times u minus g star of minus u is always less than or equal to minus phi star of zero and remember that minus phi star of zero is actually the optimal value of the primal problem meaning that this is the infimum of phi of x where x runs in rn okay Right. Because this is true for all u in Rn, if we take the supremum of this minus f star 
of a transpose u minus d star of minus u where u runs in uh, um, m this is still less than or equal to the infimum of five of x where x runs in rn okay so now this is a maximization problem um, and we hope that uh, under some conditions we will get the equality here that means the um, the minimal value of the original problem can be represented as the um, the, the maximal value of a new problem given by this way. So this idea leads to um, the fan duality that I'm going to talk about next. With that explanation, we are going to consider two optimization problems. The first problem is called the primal problem and it is given by um, here we would like to minimize 5 of x, which is f of x plus 3 of ax, where x runs in rn. Okay? And here again, f is a function uh, defined on rn. a is an m by n matrix, and 3 is um, again an extended real value function defined on rn. And um, the primal problem is a maximization problem in which we um, would like to, um, to minimize f star of a transpose u minus g star of minus u where u runs in rm um, and how come we come up with this problem i already explained uh, previously and um, we also define the following uh, so p here is the infimum of f of x plus g of ax where x runs in rm and d is the supremum of minus f star of a transpose times u minus um, d star of minus u where u runs in rm so this is the optimal value of the uh, primal problem and this is the optimal value of the dual problem and next we are going to study the relationship between um, p and d through the so-called weak duality and strong duality now we are going to um, talk about the weak duality um, we consider two functions f and g defined on on rn and rm as uh, before and over here we we make an additional assumption that um, f and g here are proper functions meaning that they have non-empty domain um, we make this assumption uh, to make sure that we can avoid adding infinity with minus infinity although some uh, convention um, can help you remove this um, assumption okay so um, then we always have that d is less than or equal to p that means the optimal value of the dual problem is always less than or equal to the optimal value of the primal problem how can we prove this theorem let me go ahead and give the detail of the proof for any u in rm we have the following we are looking at minus f star of a transpose u minus g star of minus u okay so by the definition this is equal to minus the supremum of the inner product of a transpose times u and x minus f of x where x runs in rn okay and this is minus the supremum of the inner product of um, minus u and um, and y minus um, g of y where y turns in um, rm okay 
So now based on the, the relationship between um, the supremum and the infimum, we can rewrite it as follows. So this is equal to um, the supremum. So we can convert it to um, the following. This is the infimum of f of x minus um, this one can be written as um, the inner product of u and a x where x runs in rn okay? and this is the infimum of, um, of g of y of g of y um, plus the inner product of u and y where y runs in r n okay in particular remember that if x is in r n then a times x is in r m so this is always um, less than or equal to the infimum of f of x minus the inner product of u and over here a x where x runs in r n okay and again over here we replace um, we replace y by a times x so this is less than or equal to the infimum of um, g y that means ax okay plus u ax where x runs in rn okay So next, this sum is less than or equal to the infimum of um, the following of f of x minus the inner product of u and ax, and then we add this. Uh, we add g of ax plus the inner product of u and ax, where x runs in rn. Okay. So over here, this infimum uh, plus this infimum is less than or equal to the infimum of the sum. Okay, so then we can simplify this part and this part and obtain the infimum of f of x plus g of ax, where x runs in i. And what is it? This is exactly the optimal value of the uh, primal problem denoted by uh, p okay and remember that so let me summarize the um, the upper estimate so we get this upper estimate minus f star of a transpose u minus g star of minus u is always less than or equal to p and this is true for all u in rm okay now if we we take the supremum of the left hand side with respect of to u in rm we get exactly the optimal value of the dual problem okay so uh, from here we're gonna see the following the supremum of minus f star a transpose u minus g star of minus u u runs in rm is less than or equal to p and again this is exactly d so we have completed the proof that uh, p is greater than or equal to d